This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today, we're talking with Jeff Bates, general manager of Motor Wheel. Jeff, thank you for taking the time to connect. Hey, thanks, Jason. Greatly appreciate you having me. So today we're talking about the foundation of a truck safety system. Lots of attention being uh, paid uh, to safety and trucking safety today. So glad to connect with you here uh, to talk about braking safety. I want to just kick it off. Let's start with some basics. Uh, how do quality drums, right? The quality of the drum that fleets are specking, how is that impacting braking operation as well as needed maintenance practices to keep their trucks safe? So that's a great question. And um, I think I'll start with like some of the lower quality drums, how that can affect the braking operation system. So um, typically some of the lower quality drums are made from a more basic type of cast iron that doesn't contain an abundance of alloys that aid in heat transfer and other performance characteristics. So with that being said, that can lead to a couple of things. Uh, brake fade being the first. So um, as a drum or brakes braking system is used uh, frequently, there's heat that builds up and the drum tends to expand. So uh, when you have that, that gives you uh, a result in increased stopping distance and the potential for the brake adjuster to over adjust on the vehicle. Uh, the next really would be safety and I'll combine durability and wear. Um, so on, you know, a quality drum, you want to make sure that you've got something that's not going to crack on you or come off of the vehicle uh, as it wears or if something malfunctions within the material that's inside that drum. That's really key. Uh, a lot of folks think, well, drums don't come off of vehicles anymore, and I will agree that it's not as common as it used to be. But it does actually happen, and, and as you drive down the interstate, sometimes you can look over in that emergency lane and you'll see chunks of a brake drum that's lying over there. So, so that's really critical. Uh, drum wear really is another one. So a drum that's not of high quality uh, will accelerate the lining wear. Uh, on the vehicle as well. So it's not really just tied into the drum, which really equates into more frequent maintenance operations and procedures, which leads into downtime of the vehicle and extended costs for the fleet or owner operator. Another one is um, localized hard spots in the brake drum. And, and I'm not a metallurgist or engineer, but the proper name is Martin Site Formations. So what that is, is again, it's hard spots in the drum that result in increased lining and drum wear. And it also can be felt by the driver depending on severity. So that really ties into the driver comfort side also uh, that I think a lot of folks really don't take into consideration when they're looking at brake drums. Uh, ride quality is another one. So when you get into lower quality drums, you, you need to look at the balancing process. A lot of those aren't balanced proper to, properly. And that also creates vibrations and driver discomfort. And if it's an extreme case, a really low, low quality drum, it could result in a damaging sensitive cargo that's on the vehicle. Right. And, and I think lastly on this is really tire wear. So when you look at fleets, their two biggest costs are fuel and tires. Mm -hmm. and, um, and an out of balance drum really leads to increased tire wear. So you take that vibration, the balance and everything, and it's just putting a lot more stress on those other parts of the vehicle that aren't brake related, that really impact the overall operational system of the truck or trailer. So, um, you know, from a maintenance standpoint, I think I, I talked about this, you really just increase your service intervals on the drum, the lining, or the overall braking system. So I, I think in my mind, those are probably some key factors on, on the quality side of a drum. Right. And I mean, those are important to keep in mind. I know even, even for myself, uh, we get lost in, in some of the safety headlines. We got advanced safety systems. A lot of those are coming into the secondary market now after being out there for the first generation. But at the end of the day, it's the brakes that are applied that stop the truck, right? Regardless of, of the system that's there to help a driver do that or the driver doing that themselves, it's important to keep an eye on this on these basics. On the flip side, 
margins are always thin for fleets, right? They're always looking for more ROI. Clearly, safety is probably not somewhere you want to try to squeeze ROI out of, but you definitely want to be able to show that uh, in your purchases, right? So in addition to, to just drum quality, uh, what about the impact on either fuel efficiency or a reduction in weight uh, with the right drum selection? How much how much variance and, and ability does a fleet manager have to control that within the brake drum selection? So I think they have a tremendous amount of ability to control that. And that's another great question also, because I've been in this industry going on 22 years. And uh, I think the gray hair probably, probably shows that. But, you know, the, the one thing that I've noticed especially over the past 10 to 12 years is fleets have become very savvy uh, and they're always looking for opportunities to save to the point that you just made. And I think two key ways to do that is in fuel and, uh, and reducing weight. So if you look at our drums, the genuine centrifuge motor wheel brake drum, uh, we can save up to 232 pounds on a tractor and trailer combination over a typical full cast drum. So, you know, that gives a fleet manager, an owner operator, the ability to really save on fuel and increase their payload capability. And that's really big. Um, you know, if you look at some of the statistics out there, I think this one is from Navistar. Uh, you know, they have said that for every thousand pound increase in weight, you reduce your fuel, fuel economy by a half a percent. So, you know, those can total up to big numbers, especially if you have a lot of units that are out in the field and if you're carrying very heavy cargo. Right. So, um, you know, with our drums, we've really looked at utilizing weight saving materials that are high performance to give these owner operators and fleet managers options that they can further increase their savings on their trucks and trailers. Right, for sure. I think the common, uh, you know, the common idea amongst the majority of trucks is they, you know, the loads tend to cube out before they weigh out. So that's just taking weight right off the truck and putting fuel savings right in your pocket. So very cool. Exactly, exactly. Um, go back, oh, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I was just kind of go. I was going to take a step back to something you had mentioned uh, earlier when you were talking about brake fade and then the brake adjuster maybe over adjusting in those instances. I do want to hit uh, brake adjusters, right? Especially automatic brake adjusters. It could be construed that oh, it's automatic; it'll just take care of itself, right? But we want to make sure these are operating uh, correctly uh, and performing uh, as safe as possible. What do fleets need to pay attention to in terms of maintenance checks uh, to make sure they're operating correctly? And, and how often are you checking those? Yeah, so first and foremost, I would highly recommend that, that folks always follow the brake adjuster manufacturer's recommended maintenance practices. And those will vary by manufacturer. But some of the common recommendations really include lubrication with an approved grease at regular intervals. Uh, so I, I can't stress enough to use a grease that's recommended for the specific adjuster that you're using. Um, if you don't, uh, you could get excess moisture built up in the unit itself, you, which could lead to rust and a lack of performance. You could get uh, increased wear in the unit. So for our Crucin brake adjuster, our motor wheel Crucin brake adjuster, we recommend every 50,000 miles or six months on service intervals. And that's really on the grease and just uh, give it a good overall look and, and make sure that it's intact, that it's still mounted properly and that it's functioning properly. The other thing is, is the driver needs to ensure and check that the brakes are properly adjusted each day. Mm -hmm. And that's critical. So when they start their shift, or whatever that may be, look under the truck, make sure the brake adjusters look right, make sure the maintenance has been done on those. Another key thing, and, and as crazy as this may sound, but if it's an automatic brake adjuster, do not manually adjust an automatic brake adjuster. Uh, the term automatic brake adjuster 
simply implies that it adjusts automatically. <laughs> so if the adjuster is not staying in adjustment, then that unit needs to be pulled out and serviced. Um, now another key thing is make sure you're using the same brake adjuster on both sides of an axle. Oh, yeah. So, um, and, and if it, I, I recommend using the same brand and you definitely need to make sure that you're using the right size of brake adjuster on both ends of the axle. So if you're running a five and a half inch brake adjuster, replace with a five and a half inch brake adjuster of the same brand, um, replace like for like. And here's another critical component that often gets overlooked. When servicing, make sure the air chambers are properly mounted using the correct mounting holes on the bracket. So on an air chamber bracket, there are multiple mounting holes that you can use for a five inch brake adjuster, a five and a half or a six. And I can't tell you the number of times that I've been in service shops and, and, the, and the mechanic will be having an issue with a brake adjuster and you get under the truck or trailer and look and you're like, huh, you're running a six inch brake adjuster and it's in the five inch mounting hole on the air chamber. So, you know, that really can can create some significant issues on the vehicle. Well, it's yeah. something that typically is easily overlooked. Well, and I was going to say, like, what are the top Because, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that you could take for granted and, and you know, just install and think you have it on there. And, I, frankly, it's probably one of the first times that I've heard about this issue. So what kind of, what kind of challenges or uh, consequences are we looking at if you're not really paying attention to that very specific detail that's really easy to just kind of take for granted? It's going to be the performance. The brake adjuster may not stroke appropriately uh, and work. So it's just, it's really, really key because at the end of the day, and I'm, I'm going to oversimplify this, but a brake adjuster is there to maintain clearance between the brake friction as it wears and the surface of the drum. And it just maintains that as the friction wears, the brake adjuster keeps that, that distance where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that doesn't happen, then the driver uh, will have to apply more force on the brake pedal to get the vehicle to stop, to get the friction to go against the surface of the, of the drum, the braking surface. And you don't, you don't want to do that. So, you know, it, it's, it's some of the little things like that that, that do get overlooked uh, that are critical to making sure that the brake adjuster performs as it should. No, I mean, no kidding. Safety paramount for sure, but then just think of the time and cost incurred on bringing the truck in and troubleshooting a problem. You know there's a problem there, and if you're not checking that, that very important detail, right? I mean, there's lost time and productivity when, you know, you're busy troubleshooting something that should have just been done correctly in the first place. So definitely something you want to pay attention to. I love the point about grease too. Uh, we've had a number of stories recently that details the importance of grease and yeah, you got to use the right ones. To your point, the other great thing about specking and using the same uh, type and even same brand of adjuster there, because you mentioned different uh, service intervals, different grease recommendations. You want to even just stay consistent for your own <laughs> maintenance peace of mind uh, in addition to performance there. Exactly, and and you know, uh, when you have a um, a thermal event, say on a, a trailer that's resulted from something locking up and the trailer's caught fire, sometimes people don't realize that it may not just be something in the hub that's seized up, but mismounting a brake adjuster could play into a potential thermal event on a trailer and if you get if it's not installed properly or if we go back to the air chamber bracket you could have a wheel that would lock up as the driver's dragging the trailer down the road and you get the heat build up the tire catches on fire and then it just spreads from there so uh, you know there's a lot of safety that issues associated with just making sure that those are put on and maintained properly. 
Right, for sure. And, and uh, you know, those are always just horrible instances of uh, situations, you know, and, and I know fleets know it really well. And I know that even just uh, uh, everyone who, who's been on highways, at least even before the pandemic, has seen the results of that. So definitely want to pay attention to that. Jeff, I've really, uh, I've really enjoyed this. It's important to really touch base on these basics. I know there's a lot going on out there these days. There's a lot to get caught up in, and, and a, even a lot of uh, uh, truck technology and, and that and that kind of stuff to stay to grab your attention away from the basics. Definitely important to revisit these. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, and I appreciate you having me on, Jason. And um, you know, I think the the last comment I'll make is. You know, one of the things that, that we do is, as a company and, and have been doing on the drum side for 80 plus years is we manufacture our drum using the highest quality materials and processes just to make sure that our customers get the performance, durability, and peace of mind that they've come to expect over that 80 year period. We utilize proprietary alloys in our drum going back to the to the heat transfer that allows the product, these alloys allow the heat to be pulled away from the braking surface, and that increases the longevity of the brake friction that's being used, the lining, and it also increases the life of the braking surface on the drum. So, um, you know, we're OEM approved on, on truck and trailer and have had a, a, a great um, run in the industry, and we're just excited to be with Hendrickson, uh, Hendrickson's a fantastic company. So uh, just looking forward to that and, and, and very exciting. And, and one thing I'll mention on, on the brake adjusters, I, I had talked about it's key that a driver looks at his or her truck and trailer prior to getting out on the road. And one of the things that we have on our motor wheel cruising is our auto check indicator. And that's on the brake adjuster, it's bright yellow. So what that does is that allows a driver, instead of sliding completely under the truck, they can look under the truck, and if that indicator is in the home position, their braking system's functioning properly, the brake adjuster's working properly. If for some reason it's not in that green home position and it's in the red, then that gives them an immediate indicator that they need to get a mechanic out there to take a look at that braking system. So we've got some pretty cool things on our products. And um, I, I think that have served our customer base well over over the years and look forward to continue doing that for many years to come. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, going back to the point that it starts at the spec, right? It starts at the spec and, and what you're putting on the truck. And then to your point about the uh, the, the adjuster check any way you can make that easier for the driver, it's more likely to get done, right? I know drivers are professionals, they do their jobs, but when things are more difficult and they're running behind and things happen, right? You wanna make it as easy as possible to make sure they are operating safely and efficiently. So definitely good features uh, and benefits to check out. And that, you know, again, happens at that specking phase. It all starts there, right? Absolutely. Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time. I'm sure I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much.